Oliver McParland is a most unusual and very talented local artist based in Ballycastle, County Antrim. What is unusual is he is a master of different paint media and especially on what he paints, which ranges from small canvas to gable walls. His work also includes internal walls, windows and practically anything you can paint on. He does work in full colour but often prefers black and white. His portraits on traditional size canvas are a constant example of the many commissions he's given. I caught up with Oliver on a double gable wall commission in Ballycastle. Oliver is always interested in the subject matter he paints. Well, here we are at the, the portrait or the mural of uh, Sorley Boy MacDonald. Sorley Boy lived here about five, six hundred years ago. I'm not exactly sure when, but it was at least five, six hundred years ago. Um, Francis McGinn here, which is his property, asked me to, he asked me back in March, would I uh, be able or free to do the mural? And I said I would when I heard what the subject was going to be. Yeah, I agreed to it. Um, here you see him behind me on the wall. Uh, I finished it in about three days. And what I particularly like about it is his gaze, the look in his eye, because he's looking over towards Rathlin Island. And Rathlin Island played a big part in his life story. Liz Weir, storyteller and author, explains more about the life of Sorley Boy. One of the best known Irish chieftains was Sorley Boy MacDonald. He was actually the son of the Lord of Islay, Alexander MacDonald, and came over here and again founded MacDonald clan in County Antrim probably the best known family here. Sorley Boy was a warrior. He was born in 1505. And it's amazing to think that he lived a long life till he was about 85 years old. And this was at a time when life expectancy was 43 years old. He had many battles. He was imprisoned. At one stage, they brought him off to Dublin and they pointed up to the ramparts of Dublin Castle where hung the head of his son. And he just looked at it and he said, my son hath many heads. Oh, quite a warrior. But I think the saddest story about him is when he sent his family, all his children, the older people in his family, all the people he cared about, over to Rathlin Island for their own safety. And he stood on Fairhead and he watched ships led by Francis Drake heading for Rathlin without being able to do anything. And when Drake went to Rathlin, they slaughtered about 600 people altogether. Not just the soldiers, but the women and the children and the old people. And again, Sorley Boy was powerless to do anything. They said he ran like a madman. He ran about. He couldn't do a thing about it. And an interesting thing the people in Rathen will tell you, that when in 1917 the HMS Drake was sunk in Rathen Sound by a German U-boat, they always said that was retribution for the slaughter that Francis Drake had wrought on the people of Rathen. But anyway, Sorley Boy got his name, Sorley Bui, Bui means yellow, he got his name from his yellow hair. And he lived out a long, long life. His castle was at Dunanini, which is just outside Bally Castle. There's only some remnants of it left. But again, if you look up all the chiefs in Irish history, Sorley Boy MacDonald is one of the foremost chiefs that you'll come across. The other gable wall is planned to be a more elaborate picture once again drawing on the local history of the Bally Castle area. Both murals will be black and white monotone uh, because to use colour on a, in this location with the sea breeze and the, the salt in the air wouldn't be great, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be beneficial to the mural. So to do it black and white would be more, endure, more durable. The front, the, front end, uh, the front mural, you'll see the circular window it's going to be incorporated into the mural as a, a ship's wheel for an official man behind it steering the ship, so to speak. On the far left corner, there's going to be uh, two fishermen sewing nets. Over here, we're going to have uh, an old character who's well known about the town years ago. Like his name was Dusty Rhodes. He was like a traveling wee man around the town and he wrote a lot of poetry. So he's pretty uh, well known up here. Up the top, around the, wind, around the window, we're going to have the ship's captain, so to speak, steering the ship. And there'll be various other things to combine the whole mural. An interesting character 
is James Stoddard Moore, who was also known as Dusty Rhodes, the poet. He was born in Cushendall in 1844 and ran off to sea as a teenager. He was on Arctic whaling ships. He was in the California gold rush. He met with members of Indian tribes in North America. He even served in the Welsh Fusiliers, serving at the Khyber Pass in Pakistan. But he came back to settle in Valley Castle. And he became a man of the roads. He wrote his verse under the name of Dusty Roads. The Northern Constitution, which was formerly the Korean Constitution, published his poems. And he made fun of the fact that he didn't need a roof over his head. He said, my life, it is a merry one. I revel in delight. I laugh at men who struggle in the world's ceaseless fight. I never mind how much they strive for fortune, fickle scamp. The world's affairs take no effect on dusty roads the tramp. And he didn't need a roof over his head. He'd say, I wear my bed clothes on my back. I sleep just where I like. Sometimes I doss behind a hedge and sometimes in the spike. Spike was the workhouse. So he roamed the roads from Cushendall all around the coast to Ballycastle, settled in Mill Street in Ballycastle, and lived to a ripe old age of about 85, which was quite a good age in those days. But people knew him for his verse, and uh, he was a very learned man. He'd had a lot of life experience, but I think he's one of Ballycastle's great characters. There's even a collection of his poems called A Wreath of Songs, The Poems of Dusty Roads. So worth looking him up. But it was in Port Stewart at the York Hotel that I first came across Oliver's work with this outstanding mural. The York Hotel overlooks the famous York Corner on the current Northwest 200 circuit and up to the early 1970s was facing the grid at the original circuit. The hotel had commissioned Oliver to paint Harry Gregg, who was one of my personal heroes. Harry was a world famous Northern Ireland footballer and later manager of four English clubs. I made a documentary for the BBC on Harry's heroic role at the Munich air disaster. And they wanted a community bar. This was always, a, a, this was always an area apparently where lots of locals came and there would have been pool tables here and they would watch football and golf, what have you, on the television. I suppose in a way it was an unofficial sports bar at that time. And they, they wanted something to lift it a little bit and I looked around and yeah you could put posters in the wall and you could do this and that but I got chatting to them and I thought it might be nice that we reflected the local area. Uh, Port Rush is well and truly covered with the golfers obviously. Uh, Port Stewart of course is the, the golfing connections too but I thought we need something bigger than that and we, we, we each have sort of asked ourselves who would, who's the biggest sporting star to come from Port Stewart and believe it or not they drew a blank they couldn't answer I think Maureen Medill was one of the names uh, that came and then I thought well you know for many years Harry had the Windsor Hotel uh, on the promenade and Harry's son would have, would have come in here for a drink and something to eat and I, I think we all know uh, the, the amazing connection that Harry has or had, but I guess still has to the, to the local community. And I thought it was very, very fitting that we chose a sporting icon that we're extremely proud of. Oliver was delighted to get this Harry Gregg commission as Harry was one of his childhood favorites. I wasn't given any instruction by Oliver. It was just, he, he gave me a brief outline of what he wanted done and what, what his vision for the wall was. And when he explained it all to me, I was, I was delighted to, to get at it, yeah. Uh, very satisfied, yeah. It's one of my favourites, to be honest. Uh, from start to finish, it just flowed. I made very few mistakes, and uh, it was just a delight to work, to work on. He, uh, he received the OBE, which is highlighted there, uh, but I think he should have also been needed, you know, for services to sport, yeah. Uh, to be asked whether the Munich air disaster is what Harry should be remembered for, a lot of people think that. But anybody that knew Harry, uh, he used to refer him to himself as Henry Gregg, Windsor Avenue, Korean footballer. Oliver's work around Bally Castle can spring up in the most unusual places. In this example, Kinney's Uppercut Barber's Shop on Castle Street. Oliver was commissioned to paint this mural 
to enhance the already imaginative decor in the shop. The owner was delighted with the finished painting, which complemented the rest of the memorabilia. Oliver has a wide range of painting talents as mentioned before, and one of these is portrait. We commissioned Oliver as part of this documentary to paint a portrait of William Dunlop to be auctioned with all proceeds going to charity. We will be following Oliver's progress throughout the programme. Uh, Dilly, Ronnie Dealer, that's uh, Kenny Oils I'm using at the moment. So I'm painting of this size, of this uh, personality. Uh, I tend to use oil rather than acrylics. While we watch Oliver paint, we can listen to his interview on Q Radio with Dennis McNeil. Paintings you've done, uh -huh. uh, and you've done painting, for example, uh, Joy Delop. Joy Delop. You've done uh, Rory McIlroy, and then yeah. you've painted Eric Cantona. Yeah. Is, is yeah. it all sport or what else? No, I like to paint uh, sporting icons. You know, like I do a lot of, I've done about four or five pieces of Joy, uh, Rory, two pieces of Rory. Motorcycle racer William Dunlop, who was tragically killed in a racing accident in 2018, was the son of racer Robert Dunlop and the elder brother of current racer Michael. William was an accomplished road racer who had success wherever he went, but was particularly fond of his local race at Armoy, where he had many victories, including a double in 2016. William had many loyal fans who supported him not only for his racing ability, but also because he was a gentleman of the sport and a pleasure to have in your company. For these reasons, we chose William as the subject of Oliver's portrait. Easy to miss as you quickly walk to catch the boat to Rathlin Island is the attractive mural on the sea wall of the Bay Cafe. The whole long mural is delightful but each of the picture elements is worthy of a close look, especially the mermaid and the sailing boat with its red sails remembering the famous song Red Sails in the Sunset by local lyricist Jimmy Kennedy. Something to look out for on your next visit to Ballycastle. In the NMY gym in Ballycastle, Oliver was asked to paint the Hulk by owner Niall, who explains his thinking behind the subject. I was to demonstrate two types of person in the gym. That was to, for those people that needed to relieve stress and pressure within the gym. And when they left, they came out the better person, which would have been the David. So the Hulk in the gym and the David out. Two years ago, April 2019, Niall approached me to see would I be interested in doing a mural for the gym. And he wanted to convey power and uh, dedication and everything to do with the gym. So we come up with the idea of putting the Hulk on the wall because the way I looked at it, Lou Farino was a bodybuilder, he's a, he works, he's a weightlifter and he starred in the movie, The Hulk, a TV series. So I thought it would be the perfect image for the wall. And uh, I like a challenge. So when Nell approached me to do it, I considered it a challenge to do it and it kind of keeps my pencil sharpened, if you know what I mean. So, I'm glad I did it, yeah. The historic village of Armoy in County Antrim, famous for the annual road race and home to the members of the Armoy Armada, a group of motorcycle racers who collectively had their heyday in the 1970s. The group was made up of Joey Dunlop, who would go on to be a five times Formula One world champion, Mervyn Robinson, whose career highlight was a victory at the Ulster Grand Prix in 1975. Frank Kennedy, a rostrum success at the 1976 Northwest. And Jim Dunlop, Joey's brother, who has a short but noteworthy career and is the only survivor of the four Armada members. Oliver recognised the historic significance of this commission to paint a mural in Armoy village of these four famous bikers. Junes and Elizabeth McMullen, who owned the tuck-in shop in the town here, were hoping to have a mural done. Uh, so I, I took it from there and uh, 
I rang James. He gave me his phone number and I rang James. And we organised a meet back in June. Um, we had a good discussion about what he wanted on the wall. And when I found out what the subject matter was going to be, I jumped at it. I jumped at the opportunity to do it. Every day I like to do a figure, one figure per day. So today I'm working on Mervyn Robinson. Uh, I'm just, I'm just sketching in his face at the moment. And later on today I'll be working on the body. Started the painting last Saturday the 18th, and I hope to finish it next Saturday the 5th of September. So it's roughly two weeks. Well, here again is another amazing bit of history being created here in Oromoy in memory of the road racers from the 1970s and what they achieved and what they gave to the village and uh, here again we have the continuation of that history and heritage and the road racing and it'll always be something that will be here and particularly when it comes into the road racing season every year it'll be the people will be able to come and admire it and remember uh, for what they, they achieved and what they done and what they, they, they left for road racing. But I think this uh, mural is really good for the village of Armoy. Um, it, it remembers what the Armoy Armada has done, and uh, it gives a wee bit of history, you know, as well on the on the walls. Um, it's good. There's a few wee things in Armoy, and, and this is a, another one to add to that. And uh, it's very good for the spectators, you know, whenever they're coming to the races, that they can see things like this and uh, remember what the guys have done. During the making of this documentary. Oliver had a very serious accident while touching up a mural he had painted on the gable wall of the Lurig Inn in Cushendall. The mural shows in the centre John McKillop, who was the mascot of the local Cushendall team. Around John are the local team playing the Ballycastle team. Oliver explains what happened that day. It was shortly after 12, I think it was, I was up a ladder just about here and I was painting in the white fence work just touching up the white on it and the ladder began to tilt so to straighten the ladder I grabbed the left the right hand side of the ladder and went to grab the scaffolding and after that I just went black so I had a total blackout I fell roughly 15 feet to the ground and you can see the white the white track marks on the wall and on the ground where I hit the ground, you know, so I, uh, I was taken by our ambulance uh, to the Royal Victoria Hospital and I was put in the ICU and I was placed in a coma for 22 to 23 days. Uh, I believe it took three days for me to come out of the coma. Then I was put in a recovery room for roughly a week and then sent to Musgrave Park Hospital to rehabilitate and relearn various things. Between the Royal Victoria Hospital and Musgrave Park Hospital, plus recovering at home, Oliver was away from painting for three months. Fortunately, this accident did not affect his painting skills. In a radio interview, Oliver recalls how he first fell in love with drawing at school. As far as I can remember, I was always able to do this, you know. And my earliest memory would be about four, five, maybe six year old, doing drawings of cartoon characters, Huckleberry Hound, Deputy Dog, Yogi Bear. But they must have known when you were at school that you had... Yeah, yeah. It was common bit. knowledge around the school, both schools I was at. You know. did, you, did you do cartoon drawings or drawings of teachers or...? No, cartoon. <laughs> Can't just have had to bother with teachers over yeah. there. Again. No, it was cartoon drawings to begin with, and then as I got older, it moved on to movie stars and, you know, pop idols and things like that. Oliver was asked by Glenan Primary School to give the children some art lessons on painting stones for a charity walk the school was planning. We are raising money for mental health by walking a mile per day for 10 days. Primary 7 had an idea to mark out the daily route with Positivity Rocks. We are so lucky today to have Oliver with us now. Oliver is a professional, Oliver is a professional artist. So he, he's got lots of ideas. He's got lots of ideas. He's going to look at your ideas and he's going to help you paint the best stones, the brightest stones and the most colourful stones that you can paint. 
Oliver put simple designs on the whiteboard to give the P1 and P2 children ideas and they were quickly on the job. The classes were grouped into three sessions. In this group were the middle school children. As before, the class teacher was a part of the lesson, organizing the children's painting work. Is that blue you're using? Yeah. Do you like mine? Yeah. I love it. That is brilliant. I don't have to take a photograph of that. This year one because it's really colourful and it has a lot of dots. Like that. Oh, what about you? It has a rainbow on it. Which one? Ellis. Ellis. Lovely. The final group was the senior school, and after Oliver provided examples of designs for the stones, he helped the children with the artwork. This art lesson concluded Oliver's work at the school and in a week's time the school would undertake the charity walk. Beside the Tuck Inn where Oliver had painted the gable wall mural is the Armada Hotel and in the dining area Oliver was requested to paint the dark hedges. The avenue of beech trees close to Armoy village was planted two centuries ago and today they are one of the most photographed natural features. Now famous worldwide as King's Road in the Game of Thrones. My first reaction uh, was I was very eager to do it. Uh, Robert contacted me through his daughter Amy who's uh, uh, the manageress here and I, I've dined here a few times. So when she told me when she told me what she wanted done or what her father wanted done uh, was the dark edges, I was very very eager to do it, uh, especially as the Dark Hedges is, is uh, a big major tourist attraction up here as a result of Game of Thrones. And a fellow Bally Castle man acts in Game of Thrones, Conleth Hill. So when I heard what, it, what he wanted to do, I was very eager to do it, yeah. I had no instructions from Robert, it only basically he outlined what he wanted done about the Game of Thrones and about the Dark Hedges and I had artistic license to, to do what I wanted, yeah. There, there are a couple of hidden features in the mural. Um, one of them is uh, the centerpiece is my daughter, who you can see in the center walking down the road. Uh, she's walking her two dogs. There is, just behind me, you'll see a tree with its arms outstretched, that's me. And you'll, if you look closely, you'll see a baseball cap. And that's just to signify that, that I did it, you know. Then came the first day of the walk with all the children participating. The stones they painted were laid out along both banks on the roadside to mark the route they would take. have to be up close to you and do like a sitting or something for no, you Oliver? What? No, we're completely with photographs you know I might work with maybe a dozen photographs at a time and pick out the best image. Now yeah. you're living in or around Ballycastle area? I am indeed. Although yeah. you're from Belfast originally? Yeah. Moved up here 17 years ago. Yeah. And tell me a bit I had I had said to listeners earlier I, I understand from what I've been reading about you you've no formal art training no. or education no. or qualification? No. After he had recovered from the accident, Oliver visited the Air Ambulance Headquarters near Lisburn to thank the team that saved his life. Yeah, Oliver, so lovely. It really is. Thank to have you. you here thank at you. Thank base you. And 
It's it's not every day we, we get to meet our, no, our patients. No. And Someone gave me uh, statistics that of every 10 people that would fall mm -hmm. the way I did, mm -hmm. one would live. So yes. I happen to be the lucky one, you know, so. Fantastic. Yeah. It makes it all real you know, when you hear that kind of thing. Glenn O'Rourke explains how the crew would have reacted to Oliver's accident. So an example like yours, the call came in that somebody's fallen from scaffolding, I believe, mm -hmm. and he had a head injury. With that terminology, we get then our air desk listening in further. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some questions we want to ask you or the call taker to determine, do you need the mm -hmm. air ambulance team? Do you need a doctor or paramedic team? Once that's established, we are here based at Lisburn. Mm -hmm. Cushion Doll is approximately a 20-minute flight. Mm -hmm. So that call would have come in, you hear here, uh, mm -hmm. like a travel nine call, Hems call and the pilot, the doctor and the paramedic come here to the helicopter which is parked outside okay. and then they would do a few checks. Within five minutes we're airborne. It's a good partnership in that the ambulance service provide the medical team yeah. and all the medicines and so yeah. on and yeah. then the charity's responsible yeah. for helicopter yeah. and our, our base here and, and things like that so yeah. that, that works well but yeah. it is a big figure we need to raise now. It's, it's two yeah. million every year you yeah. know. Um, but as I always say, if everybody does a little bit. Oliver presented the Air Ambulance Service with a painting to auction for funds for the charity. My speciality would be portraiture. Uh -huh. You know, it always has been. Mm. You know, uh, the human face, uh, painting the human face fascinates me, you know. Uh, so, are you, go, are you, I'm interrupting you. I'm going to let you pick up from that there. But yeah. you tell me when you look at someone like me or look at somebody else, are you seeing... So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. that. That makes me nervous. That's exactly what, mm. what happens. Yeah. So you are sizing things up or sizing someone up when you have a look? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What were you going to say then? So, so you, you have an eye for detail in the face? Yeah. Uh, when I'm talking to people, like, I'm studying their, their faces, you know, mm. and, and just sussing out what, what would be a good painting, you know, or someone has a face that would make a good painting and would transfer well to canvas. Oliver has now completed most of the portrait of William Dunlop and is making the final detailed touches to the painting. It has taken many days to reach this final stage and I was hugely impressed with the result which was a very profound study of this famous racer. I am sure many will want to bid for this portrait as it would be a fine addition to any collection. All the proceeds from the sale will go equally to the Northern Ireland Children's Kidney Fund and the Northern Ireland Air Ambulance. Oliver has an exhibition planned for later this year and here is a selection of some of the paintings. For his last exhibition, he exhibited paintings of Carl Frampton, Liam Neeson, Phil Coulter, James Nesbitt and Bruce Springsteen, among many others.